we don't know, you know, how she will be succeeded. We don't know when she will be succeeded. We don't know who will succeed she. And without that knowledge, it's, you know, it's hard to make judgments then about, you know, what would that do for China's politics, its economy, its foreign policies. Um, but I think, you know, we can at least engage in some you know, informed speculation. Um, you know, we know from previous succession battles in, in China, particularly the succession from Mao Zedong eventually to Deng Xiaoping, uh, that the, there was a lot of uh, intra-party fighting and disagreement and um, fundamentally you know, reinforces the idea that this is a kind of an unpredictable dynamic process. You know, we can look to, you know, which leaders below Xi currently, you know, hold positions of power and have, you know, networks of potential supporters behind them. So in Xi's third term, which began last October at the 20th Party Congress, uh, you know, there's kind of two major networks of uh, Xi supporters that have emerged, one based on officials who knew him in or, or kind of through Fujian province, where he spent most of the, the 80s, 90s um, as a provincial leader there. It kind of goes all the way up to Tsai Chi, who is the, the fifth, formerly the fifth ranked leader, but you know, he runs the central secretariat and the CCP's general office. It really controls the nerve center of party operations. And there's another group kind of based on officials who know Xi from Zhejiang province, where he's a, a leader in the mid 2000s kind of goes all the way up to Premier Li Qiang, uh, who's formerly number two in the party system. Um, so, you know, if we saw, you know, if she left the scene tomorrow, he resigned or got sick, then, I mean, it's likely at least that, you know, those two networks would be the locus of any type of power struggle. And, you know, one of those figures perhaps would be, um, you know, a likely successor. Uh, but again, it would be a, a very dynamic process, um, the security services, the military become involved in terms of endorsing particular leaders. Um, there'd be, you know, negotiations behind the scenes that, you know, maybe someone else would emerge as the kind of consensus candidate or is able to manipulate the process of how the next leader is selected, um, to install themselves as leader and kind of present a fait accompli to the rest of the party. Um, so we don't know, but we can we can speculate in a way that's at least grounded in um, some relatively well-known facts about Chinese politics. Yeah.